Hi you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I will be giving you my January homeschooling update. I really feel like I haven't sat down and did like an update video for you guys in forever. I think it's really been uh, since October that I gave you guys like an official like homeschooling update. So um, I'm really going to try my best to catch you guys up on everything that has happened in our homeschool, how we're doing, um, some curriculum switches we have made for uh, like mid-year, how that's going and everything like that. Um, so um, hopefully you guys will enjoy my January homeschooling update. So if any of you guys are new here to my channel, I am a homeschooling mom of three. I have a sixth grader, kindergartner, and a pre-K four in my homeschool this year. So you guys, as far as January, how did it go? How is it going? Um, I am happy to say our transition back into school from our holiday break, it went surprisingly well. I was really, really nervous. I didn't know like what to expect, especially since we took off uh, two weeks for Christmas. We took off the last week of December and the first week of January. Um, I was a little bit uh, fatigued and I was ready to take an additional week off with my kiddos, but they were ready to go. Um, and I was like, all right, here we go. So we started off uh, school on January 8th. And um, like I said, I'm just happy that we just like ease right on back into it. My littles was so happy when they see me pull back out their books and they were ready to go. So um, it was overall an enjoyable experience. However, I will say January is always like one of my hardest months when it just comes to like overall. I mean, it's cold, it's winter time. Uh, we were having some really, really cold days in January where my kids was unable to get outside. And you guys already know how crucial it is to, you know, get your kids outside and, you know, let them get all those wiggles out and ride their bikes and things like that. Um, they were unable to do that a lot in January. So it did make it harder on us in our homeschool, really being stuck in the house a little bit more than usual. Um, the days are cold. It becomes darker so early. So it's just like, oh, January was definitely like a drag when it comes to that. Now, I will say, uh, since I do live in Georgia, we had like uh, crazy warm weather the last week of January. I mean, it was like between 63 and 65 degrees, which is amazing. Um, so the kids, you know, we went out to the park, we got outside, we had so much fun when we got those little, you know, spurts of spring weather, I should say in January, and it was so much fun so much needed in our homeschool. So I'm happy that the weather did shift for us a little bit. Now it's back to being cold, which is, you know, it's perfectly fine. Uh, for us, our seasons, we really only have like one more month of it being cold. And typically in March is when uh, down here, we will like have our spring weather, which is so great. So uh, yeah. Now, as far as like our homeschool hangouts and things like that, you guys, uh, we did an awful job in January. We didn't go to any like of our homeschool hangouts and things like that. Either I wasn't feeling it or my oldest daughter wasn't feeling it. So we pretty much just stayed at home uh, when it comes to like our homeschool in a month of January, which is perfectly fine. You know, some months it's just like that. Um, now, as far as February goes, uh, we are definitely, you know, getting back into swing of going to our weekly homeschool hangouts. I actually was able to sign up my oldest for a 3D printing class um, at our local library. So she's gonna be learning how to work a 3D printer. She's doing a two day workshop. So hopefully she enjoys that. So we do have a few like events and things like that to look forward to as far as like our hangouts. So I'm really, really happy uh, that I was able to get her registered in those classes. So she's excited as well too. So that is what we have to look forward to in February. Now, as far as my sixth grader, you guys goes, a lot of you had a um, a lot of you guys had a lot of questions as far as like uh, what she's really doing and like her curriculum updates. Because when I made her mid year curriculum update, I primarily focused on our Oak Meadow six curriculum, and I really didn't touch bases on a lot of the other either supplemental things or uh, the other subjects that we are including in our homeschool. So hopefully, uh, when I give you this brief recap, it will kind of like up update you guys all and it will answer a lot of your questions that you had in my previous videos. I also recently made my sixth graders independent homeschool routine so if you want to check that video out I will definitely link it down below so you can kind of see like her flow and her routine and how things is going as far as like her overall like workload and things like that. Um, so yeah so let's go ahead and get into it. So 
Uh, first thing that is new for my sixth grader is that she completed Matthew C. Zeta the, uh, at the end of December. Literally, it was like two days before we broke. And I think what I did was when she finished Matthew C. Zeta, I was like, you know what? I don't care. It's a Wednesday. We are just taking off the, uh, we're starting our holiday break now. Like it's official. So <laughs> the completion of Matthew C. Zeta started off our holiday break and, um, she was so excited. So we are now into Matthew C. Pre-Algebra. And she's doing pretty well. I will say it was a big jump from the Matthew C. Zeta series or that she did Epsilon and Zeta. So it was a big jump from the general math series now into the secondary math. Um, but she's doing really well. I did uh, supplement uh, this as far as like using the math generator sheets on the Matthew C's uh, digital toolbox to generate her more worksheets so she can get additional practice because I want to make sure um, she doesn't have any gaps when it comes to pre-algebra. I know it's so important, uh, especially the next precursor is algebra. So uh, we are definitely taking our time and she's starting this early. I mean, she's in the sixth grade right now uh, starting pre-algebra. So I'm just going to let her, you know, ride this baby out, take her time and uh, we're just going to hone in on all of these skills. I find she's not as independent as she was when it came to like the Matthew C. Zeta and Epsilon series now that we're in pre-algebra, but it's perfectly fine. Math is one of my stronger subjects and I, I do not mind helping her and being there for her a little bit more than I had to previously. So overall, it's going well and I'm happy we stuck with uh, Matthew C. for pre-algebra. Now, along with Matthew C, she's still using her Oak Meadows Math 6 as a supplement because she is taking her standardized test. I believe I'm going to schedule it for May. Um, so that's when she's going to take it. And I definitely want to ensure that since she is doing pre-algebra, she still is going to have like additional review and all of the other concepts she's already mastered. So that's the only reason why we are doing her Oak Meadows Math 6 still along with pre-algebra. But to really be honest, I could go ahead and give her that final for the Oak Meadows Math 6 and she could pass it right now. But I'm just using it for additional practice and review. We are also using IX Excel too for like additional practice and review in preparation for her standardized tests as well at the end of the year and that's going great too. So um, that is Brie what's going on with math for her. Now as far as her English, a lot of you guys asked me were we still using um, IEW along with the English and yes we are still using um, IEW structure and style. This is level 1B. We are on week six right now and my anticipation for um, IEW is that we typically do IEW every other week or the week that Oak Meadow doesn't have like a heavy writing assignment is when I pick up IEW. So every week she's given me some type of paper, whether it be in her Oak Meadows English or in IEW. So she's pretty much writing one paper a week, which I think is definitely doable for this particular kiddo. So uh, because we're not doing this every week, we will only have half of this done, which is unit 12 will be done by May. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to probably go ahead and finish up this level over the summer. And then um, I'm debating, and this is what I'm debating on for her, is whether we're going to go into 2B or if I'm going to do the public speaking course is like my decision I have to make for her for the upcoming uh, year. So uh, we are really, really enjoying it. And I definitely am happy to still give her some structure when it comes to her writing because Oak Meadow does uh, give her a lot of opportunities to do more creative writing, short stories. She's doing scenes. She's going to be doing... Um, a playwright really really soon like a, a script so uh, she really has a lot of other creative outlets through her Oak Mills curriculum this is just providing her with more structure when it comes to like formal papers so uh, we are still are using IEW um, and fix a grammar too a lot of you guys asked me if we're still doing fix a grammar yes we're still doing fix a grammar we are on week 20 right now so we have about 10 weeks left of fix it grammar it's going well I will say this is just really a review when it comes to her grammar skills because Brielle really has learned a lot when it comes to grammar through Rod and Staff we've done Rod and Staff for three years now for fourth fifth and sixth grade so I really feel like that's primarily where she's learned like the root or the basics of grammar this is just for a review and additional practice for her 
So that is like her English lineup and some of you guys' most commonly asked questions when it comes to that. Now for vocabulary, she is using vocabulary cartoons and I also pulled out word roots for her. So she's using some of her newer supplemental books this semester when it's coming to like her vocabulary practice and reinforcement of the skills, which is really going great. So I'm happy about that. Vocabulary was an area we really need to hone in for her. And I definitely will say I have seen so much growth in her vocabulary. I'm seeing her use more vocabulary words and bigger vocabulary words within her uh, papers, which is definitely a sign she is really retaining um, it. And I'm really, really happy. Um, so we're doing a little bit non-traditional vocabulary with the vocabulary cartoons and more traditional vocabulary now with her word roots level one. Now our big switch for my sixth grader was I made a mid-year curriculum switch for science. We were doing Oak Meadows Basic Life Science for the whole first semester and I was finding that science was not as independent as all of her other subjects. And because I have taken on this year kindergarten and working with my uh, preschooler as well, I really needed her to be able to, uh, I guess, take on more subjects and me come in on the back end for her. So um, I was finding she was unable able to really do that with the basic life science. Now I will say I absolutely love Oak Meadow Science. It's very rigorous. She was writing lab reports. She was drawing a lot of diagrams. Um, it definitely was the level of science I want for her. But I just wanted something more independent. So because of that, I just looked in my closet, you guys. I had some donations that I was going to donate, but I never got to. And um, I just pulled out my Apologias Exploring Creation with Chemistry and Physics since I already had it here. It was, no, it was nothing that I had to additionally purchase. And you guys, I will be honest, so far it's going pretty well. My daughter's able to do uh, the reading, the vocabulary, the exercises on her own. I come in and do the experiments. We uh, review it together and she's really enjoying it. And uh, so far it hasn't been bad at all. Um, I see why a lot of people really enjoy Apologia. And I like the way it's written and the narrative. It's really written simply and it's written in story form. So it does have like kind of like a Charlotte Mason flair to it. So we have completed, I believe, six weeks of it so far because we're doing this at a little bit of a faster uh, pace since we are picking it up just in second semester. So yeah, we've completed six weeks of it so far. And it's going well. It's a total of 28 weeks of this curriculum. And we're averaging um, two weeks each week because um, if you guys can see, like it has like two days for you to do science for two days a week. And we've been doing science for four days a week. And that's how we're able to kind of like fast track this. So I'm hoping we can have this completed by the end of the semester and uh, kind of go from there. But so far she's enjoying it and she's able to do this on her own. And I really don't have any complaints. So uh, that is her science um, when it comes to that. So those are the only things that really has changed when it has come to her and her curricula is science. Everything else is pretty much the same or we leveled up. Now, uh, we also did complete Curiosity Chronicles um, Ancient Times last semester. And I think I forgot to mention that for you guys. Um, Curiosity Chronicles, it looks like this. I actually purchased it digital. So um, I don't have any physical books to show you because I was using it digitally. And um, Brielle really, really enjoyed it. And I'm gonna, you know, give you guys like a little glimpse inside of her whole Ancient Times, um, her, uh, what is it, her, um, notebook that she made her interactive notebook she really really had a lot of fun like doing all the mapping and i really think because she'd never experienced ancient times in history before in our homeschool uh being able to use curiosity chronicles as a supplement along with her oak metal she really was able to get a good grasp of ancient history and she enjoyed it and i also enjoyed using the curiosity chronicles we didn't do all the aspects of it we did a lot of it orally where i would ask her um to recall the different chapters and the math work and things like that and it lined up really really great with her oak metal so this was really really fun and if you guys want more details about how curiosity chronicles went i could make a separate video for you guys uh but it went well and uh, as you guys can see her history notebook is pretty pretty big so she really really enjoyed doing all the notebooking pages and the lap books when it came to her um, ancient times so uh that is really everything for my sixth grader 
Now, as far as my kindergartner goes, you guys, uh, she is doing so much better, you guys, when it's come to like her phonics and her phonics instructions. I believe in my mid-year update, I was talking about um, how we were going really, really slow and all about reading. We still are not going as fast as I would like to, but she's retaining it and she's getting it. And we're doing more daily lessons with her. So we're doing lessons like she doesn't get a break when it comes to phonics, even on the weekends. And I think in that video, I mentioned that on Saturdays and Sundays, I spend like five minutes and I briefly go over her um, little green cards. So these are like her uh, green fluency cards. I will just uh, pull out a stack of these, go over some of the words, let her sound them out. And sometimes we even will read like one of her Bob books and she's done. And with her having that constant uh, daily phonics practice, I don't know, it's just doing something for her because she's definitely making more progress. And I'm so proud of her. We are on lesson nine and I believe we'll probably wrap up lesson nine by the end of this week and go into lesson 10. So uh, we're making more progress through lessons now by me giving her daily phonics instructions. And I'm really, really proud of her uh, that she's doing so well when it comes to that. And I'm happy we're sticking with all about reading. It's going well. And I think I just need to be okay with us moving at it at a slower pace. Now, as far as her math, that's going great. We are on week 25 of her kindergarten math with confidence. I thought we would have it finished by the end of February, but it's looking like we'll have it finished the first week of March, which is no problem. Um, we'll just go ahead and move into her first grade math with confidence. Once we finish kindergarten math with confidence, I already have it on my shelf and we'll kind of just take it from there. She's going, she's doing so well with it. She's loving that program. I'm loving it as well. It's very hands-on and I think she really enjoys like the games is her favorite part of the program and I'm, I'm really enjoying the games too because I'm really able to see like her mental math skills and how much they have grown from the beginning of the school year to the end. And you guys don't worry, as soon as we finish Kindergarten Math with Confidence, I will give you guys like my end of the course review on it and how I felt some of my quirks about it and what I would do differently with my next kiddo when it comes to Kindergarten Math with Confidence. And um, I definitely will make that video as soon as we complete it, but it's going really, really well. Um, we're still using Kindergarten Math with Confidence with Matthew C uh, and that's going well too. So I'm really, really happy, I'm proud of her. And I definitely know with uh, my middle daughter it's definitely consistency I just have to remain consistent and you guys I also have to come at our sessions with more like of a positive attitude I really feel like I was coming to our sessions sometimes stressed out feeling like what am I doing wrong and I think she was really feeding off of my energy you know now before we start our lessons you know I uh, give her a big hug and we've been saying her memory verse which is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me she says that every single day before she does her phonics instructions and you guys like I'm just faking it till I make it because sometimes like when she keeps on making the same mistakes over and over again I want to like be so frustrated but I'm trying my best to like take a deep breath, you know, go over it with her over and over again. And I just know, you know, it's going to click. It has clicked from the skills we worked on now to where we're at. So I'm just going to continue to come at it with a positive attitude and just know, even though sometimes it does drive me crazy, the amount of repetition you have to do in teaching a kiddo to read, overall, it's going well. And, you know, that's good. So I'm happy when it comes to that. Now, as far as my kindergartner and my pre kers routine, a lot of you guys have asked me, you wanted to see like how their routine is going and how I do school with them. Don't worry, I'm gonna try my best to film that video Hopefully by the end of the month or March, you will be able to see like their routine and how they get up to school and like how I have things and how I'm able to manage my sixth grader along with my littles because a lot of you guys was asking me questions like that uh, in my sixth graders home homeschooling routine video because I think you were able to see when I was doing some work with my sixth grader, they were kind of like off playing with Play-Doh or doing things. So um, hopefully I can, you know, show you guys their routine so you can kind of see it more so in action how they uh, do their flow of school. So um, yeah. Now you guys, as far as planning for the 
2025 homeschooling year. I know a lot of you guys want to know like where I am at when it comes to my planning and I'm going to be completely honest. I really don't know if I can make a planning video for you guys because my seventh grader, I actually am looking at her boxes of curriculum that I have already here. So literally it's only one more thing I need to buy for my seventh grader and I'm done. So it's not really a planning video I can make as far as her. Uh, the only thing that I am trying to figure out again, like I said before, is if we are going to go into to be as far as her writing or if I'm going to do public speaking if I'm not going to do IEW at all with her that's like my last decision I have to make for her but other than that everything else is like right here for her now as far as my upcoming first grader uh, I have to make a decision for her in her science and history because now I'm going to have to officially register her for the Georgia Board of Education I am now required to do all subjects um, I have no more leniency when it comes to me kind of just doing whatever I want to do I do have to now follow my state laws as far as um, homeschooling her so I do need to figure out what I'm going to do for science and for history. Now, science is definitely one of my toughest subjects to teach. I found that in having everything that I need and more of an open and go science is what I'm looking for. Um, I do have some options for her for science that I'm looking at. I'm either looking into doing uh, Bookshark, Sunlight, or neo science are the three science curriculums that I'm looking at. Um, you guys, I am going to put most of my budget in science for my uh, first grader just because um, I just need something I can open up, follow. I want a lab kit. I want it all. And because I want it all, I know it comes with a price tag and I'm willing to pay that price tag in order for me to be consistent in this subject that I know I have been weak in. And I have, I'm not making any more excuses I'm just going to go ahead and get what I need in order for me to be consistent in science. Now, as far as um, history goes for my first grader, I'm looking into doing something more literature based uh, when it comes to her. So I'm either looking into uh, picking back up beautiful feet around the world or picture books. I also looked into Torchlight or Built Your Library. They all have like a uh, world geography and that's the what I want to do for her for first and second grade. I want to do world geography and then uh, the rest of her middle school years I do want to do American history is what I'm looking into or her elementary school years is what I'm looking into for my um, second daughter, my middle daughter. So that's kind of like what I'm looking for for her. Now as far as my pre-k four, she's doing really really good. I'm going to call it pre-k four uh, this upcoming homeschool year but she's going to be doing a little bit of kindergarten work, um, a little bit of pre-k four work. And um, I'm pretty much just going to recycle some of the older curriculum that I use with her uh, older sister. And I'm really not going to get anything new for her. I'm going to use what I have. I already have her kindergarten math with confidence workbook that I'm going to be using with her because we already finished preschool math at home. So it's not really going to be any big changes or surprises for her. Um, I'm really going to try to tag her along with my first grader when it comes to the science and the history literature portions and let her kind of like listen in if she wants to. And that's like my plan for them. Um, I'm really looking just for something that will tell me what to read, tell me what to do. I don't have to think about it because as I'm getting up here with my middle schooler, I'm finding I do have to be more intentional when it comes to the time I'm spending with her and making sure uh, we are hitting those benchmarks that I want to hit for my middle schooler while also too providing like my youngers with what they need. So that is like my, I guess, planning update when it comes to uh, my 2024, 2025 homeschooling year. So nothing really I can make into a separate video for you guys. This was pretty much my little brainstorm right here, but um, that's where I'm at. As soon as I finalize all of my curricula picks, I will be sharing them with you guys. I'm not too sure when. Hopefully, I will have my curriculum picks ready to share with you guys. Maybe April, I should say, because I do want to start making curriculum review videos of the curriculas that we have used, we have finished to really help you guys in making your upcoming curriculum choices. So, just be on the lookout um, as soon as I have everything in, you definitely will see my curriculum picks for the 2024, 2025 homeschooling year. So before we end this video, I definitely want to go ahead and give you guys my plans for February. So February is Black History Month and I typically uh, go all out when it comes to Black History Month in my homeschool, but I decided this year to keep it simple. So I have my basket of all of the resources that I'm using this month for Black History Month and I just pulled a lot of these off of my shelf. Nothing is new. I am keeping it really, really simple. 
So every morning we have been reading either from our Little Leaders Bold Women in Black History or our Little Leaders Exceptional Men in Black History. We reread we, we one or the other. My kiddos are really, really enjoying listening to new people in Black History. I had these books, you guys, since my first year of homeschool and we still haven't read all the people. So it's really, really been fun pulling this baby back out. Uh, today, actually, uh, when I homeschooled my kiddos, uh, they learned about Gordon Parks. I found the picture of Gordon Parks and they all colored it and um, they really, really enjoyed listening to, um, I guess, what he did, his contribution uh, through his photography in, in America. They really, really enjoyed that. So we're picking one person a day, and that is how we are studying um, our person or figure within Black history. Now, as far as another book I'm using, we are doing poetry. I pulled out my Hip Hop Speaks to Children. This has like a CD that goes along with it. So the kiddos love listening to like the beats through the uh, CD rhyme and everything like that. And I love it too as well. So we love this book. This is a great one. Um, I just love the compilation of all the poets and uh, it's, it's great. Uh, I definitely would recommend this book. So this is what we're doing as far as poetry. Uh, two other books that we're reading too is The ABCs of Black History and this is I Affirm Me. These are really, really cute um, letters. So each day we'll go over one letter. So this one is A. A is for Afro. I'm proud of my textured halo. It shows pride in my roots. Each coil creates my crown. So this one goes A through Z and then this book right here goes A through Z. So each day we read a letter out of both of these books. So that is how simple I am keeping Black History Month for us this year, you guys. And the kiddos are really, really enjoying like our Black History basket. And like I said, every day I just have like a coloring sheet for the uh, figure or the person we're talking about. So uh, that is kind of like a part of like our morning work this month, really just to ensure we get that extra time when it comes to Black History. But I'm going to be honest, we do Black History all year round in my homeschool. So this is just a little bit extra for us. So um, those are our February plans along with, uh, you know, just keeping up with our curriculum, being consistent. Because it's colder, I'm really trying to buckle down when it comes to our homeschool because you guys, I know as soon as the weather gets warm, um, you guys like, <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Like I will stop the lessons and say, let's go outside. So I know how I get when it comes to like uh, March and April. And now because it's cold, I'm really trying to buckle down get as much stuff done so when it gets to the warmer weather uh, we will be finishing off pieces of curriculum and we can kind of like get outside and um, I can get the kids some fresh air and we can really really um, I guess enjoy doing home more homeschool days outside too as well so I really hope you guys enjoyed my January homeschooling update if you have any questions for me please leave them down below and I definitely will make sure I try to answer all of them I hope your back to school season for the month of January has been well and i look forward to seeing everybody you guys in my next one bye